Okay, so company just said they're coming over for supper. What do you do? You need a dessert. Well, one of my favorite things to throw together is homemade pudding, which surprises a lot of people because all those little boxes of pudding at the store has made us think that real pudding is unattainable. But homemade pudding is anything but unattainable. It's actually one of the easiest desserts you can throw together. And if you have homegrown eggs or maybe some local milk or milk that you've gotten from your own dairy animals, it is out of this world. So I have shown you how to make butterscotch pudding before, but today we're taking it down to the basics and we're gonna make homemade vanilla pudding from scratch. So you know me, if you have my cookbook, you know that I don't do complicated ingredients and I don't do fussy recipes. And that's why this pudding is perfect because it uses stuff you already have in your cupboards and in your refrigerator. So get ready for this. It's gonna be way easier than you think. First things first, you need to grab some sugar and some cornstarch. So I love organic, brown, unrefined cane sugar, but for this recipe, I will use an organic whiter sugar. You can see it's not as white as the typical sugars at the grocery store. This is an organic version, but it's definitely not brown sugar either, which is important since this is vanilla pudding and I would prefer it to not be super dark brown. Because people get a little weird when that happens. Okay, so we're gonna grab three quarters of a cup of sugar and put it right into a medium sized saucepan. I don't have this turned on yet, it is off. and three tablespoons of cornstarch. Now I like to use an organic cornstarch okay. because it doesn't have the GMO stuff in it. So this makes me feel a little bit better. So we're gonna add three tablespoons of this right into our sugar. And this is just gonna be a thickener to help the pudding, well, look like pudding. All right, grab a whisk and Bring that together. The burner is still not on, but I'm gonna grab three cups of milk. Now this is milk that we got this morning from our cows. So it is whole milk, it is raw milk, but you can use whatever milk you have in your refrigerator. The bonus to this is, is that because it's so new, the cream hasn't had a chance to rise to the top yet. So this will make our pudding extra creamy. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn my burner on to low-ish and whisk in the milk. It'll be a little chunky at first, but it won't take long for it to dissolve into the sugar cornstarch mixture. Okay, so I'm gonna keep my heat at about medium now. And I'm just gonna keep an eye on this. We're looking for it to get thickened and bubbly. And it takes a few minutes to get to that point because the milk's cold. I'm gonna give it a little bit of time. And I like to give it a stir every once in a while just to make sure the sugar hasn't settled on the bottom and that nothing is scorching. This is good for the time being. Let's get our eggs ready. So I'm pretty sure that pudding must have been invented by a homesteader because it features two of my favorite homestead ingredients, which are fresh milk and fresh eggs. And a simple pudding like this really gives these ingredients an opportunity to shine. So you can see we have no shortage of eggs at the moment from the chickens outside. So I have my four eggs and I'm gonna separate these so the yolks and the whites are in different containers. So let's grab a little bowl for my whites. For this recipe, I only want the yolks because that's going to give the pudding a beautiful yellow color and also help it to thicken. So let's see how bad I can mess this up on camera. Okay, so that was not off to a great start. So how I usually separate eggs is I try to break the egg in half evenly uh, and then let the shells do the work, but this didn't break very evenly. We're gonna dump our yolks in there. Try, try for this next one to see if it's a little better. Okay, there we go. So break it apart, do a little flip flop back and forth. Let most of the white go out. If there's a little bit of white left, it's not the end of the world. Separating is easiest with fresh eggs because when eggs get older, they start to lose a little bit of the liquid and they get a little bit thicker and then it's a little gummy and it's hard to get things to flow. So fresher the better for this. There we go. 
Now I'm gonna put my eggshells over here for the pigs. We have a bucket over here at all times. That goes to the pigs or the chickens. And as far as your whites go, you can save these back and use them in another recipe. Or if you have a abundance of eggs, you can give these to your chickens or pigs as well. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna give this a check to make sure we're not getting too hot. Okay, we're definitely heating up, but it's not quite thickened. So you just have to kind of learn how to feel this. I wish I could pull you through the screen and let you feel what the milk does as it starts to thicken. It'll just give a little more resistance to your whisk. And right now when I whisk, it just feels like milk. So I know it's not quite ready, but as it continues to heat, the cornstarch will start to do its thing and it will also evaporate a little bit of the liquid out and you'll start to notice the difference. So we're getting close, but not quite there yet. I'm gonna give it a stir just to make sure nothing is sticking. All right, so while that is doing its thing, I'm gonna go ahead and beat my yolks in this container. And I would recommend that you put these yolks in some sort of heat proof bowl. So I need it to be big enough um, that it can hold the eggs plus some of the liquid because we're gonna do this step called tempering. We're going to temper the eggs because if we don't, we'll end up with scrambled egg pudding, which isn't so great. So I want this bowl to be big enough to have room for some of this liquid in this pot to come into this container and also give me a chance to whisk up the eggs a little bit so they're ready to roll. So when it comes to this homemade pudding, how I like to serve it is that I will sometimes just put it in little pudding cups for if it's just the kids and us here at home and we want a Saturday night dessert. Or if I want to fancy things up just a tad, you can pour it into a pie shell, maybe a graham cracker pie crust or a pre-baked flour pie crust, which makes a great pudding pie with some whipped cream on top. Or there's all sorts of pudding rich desserts that float around online and you can just swap out the box of pudding mix that they call for and use homemade instead. And it is such a huge difference when you just take a few extra minutes to mix this up. So once it gets to the point where it really starts to thicken and I feel that change, I'm gonna let it continue to cook for about two minutes more. And I like to stir constantly during that point, just so I don't scorch any pudding on the pan, which has definitely happened before. Okay, so now comes the tempering part. So basically what this is, is we're adding hot liquid slowly to the eggs because we want to increase their temperature without scrambling them. So here's how I do this. We're gonna take our pot and very gently and slowly pour in about a cup of the milk mixture. Just a little bit at a time. We don't wanna shock the little eggs. Stirring as we go, just to make sure that heat is dispersed. And I don't know, I think most recipes say to pour in about a cup of the hot liquid. I usually go a little bit more just to err on the side of caution. You can see how those yolks are gonna give the pudding that amazing color without any artificial dyes or colorings. So just bringing up the temperatures of those eggs as we go. Now we're gonna turn our burner to low, which it already is there. Set the pot back down. And then we're gonna take this mixture and put it back in that pot. And then I might bump my heat just a tad, not, nothing too crazy. And I'm gonna stir this constantly and bring it back to a boil. And once we see that boil starting to come back up, I'm gonna turn down the heat just a little bit and cook for another two minutes while I stir. And then we're almost done. And we just wanna make sure we cook this, not, not so much that we're burning it, but enough that it's going to be thickened sufficiently. And once we put this in the refrigerator to chill, that's when we're gonna get it really set up and that perfect pudding consistency. All right, last step, turn off your heat, move your saucepan over to the side, and then we have two more ingredients. We're gonna add a tablespoon of butter, just plop that in and it'll melt in just a second. And, the magic ingredient, which is vanilla extract. Of course, mine is homemade. You could use store-bought if, if you have it. Um, and I never measure vanilla because more is more, but I think it needs about a tablespoon or so, somewhere in there. All right, now this will melt pretty quickly. I'm just gonna give one last stir to make sure the butter is all incorporated. And that is pretty much it. All right, so I will usually just grab an eclectic bunch of little dishes to put my pudding in. Now, if I was making a big batch of pudding to use in a dessert later, 
I could just stick it in a big bowl, but since this is for the family, everyone seems to enjoy their own separate little dish. The butter is melted. I'm just going to pour it into the bowls. Sometimes I just use old coffee mugs if all of these are dirty, so it's not fancy. We don't have a special pudding cup. Um, you can eat your pudding warm, but we prefer it cold. So I'll just stick these into the fridge, probably for a couple hours or until they're chilled. If you're concerned about your pudding getting that kind of skin on top as it cools, then it's supposed to get a little bit of a chewier top. You can put a piece of plastic wrap over this, but since we're gonna eat this in just a few hours, I'm not too worried. We're just gonna find a spot for it in my very messy fridge.